the channel that's about baking and much, much more. A warm welcome to my channel. Do you enjoy seafood? Then you'll love today's special at Patty Cake. Flavor-packed Goan Fish Curry made with fresh coconut. Interestingly, the recipe for this appetizing traditional curry has several versions with minor variations in the ingredients and procedure. But what's common is the amazing taste. And also, what's surprising is the simplicity of this recipe. Simple ingredients and simple steps. Another interesting thing, no oil is added separately in this recipe. The oil content comes from the coconut. Now without any further delay, let me show you my version of this popular and super tasty goan dish right here at Pata Cake. I'm making today's delicious Goan fish curry with palm frit, but you could make it with any fish of your choice, like for example mackerel, that's bangra, or kingfish, popularly called surmai. These are six medium-sized palm frits that I've washed well. I've made just one slit in each of them, but larger palm frits could be cut into three or four pieces each. Let's marinate the fish with half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Let's coat the palm frits well with this mix. We'll now let the fish marinate for around 20 minutes. In the meanwhile, let's prepare the masala for the curry. To this grinder jar, I'll add one and a quarter cups of grated fresh coconut followed by six Kashmiri chilies that I had soaked in hot water for around half an hour. You could also use a mix of Kashmiri and Bedgi chilies instead. I'll tear each of these into two pieces. And then add half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, one tablespoon of coriander seeds, one teaspoon of cumin seeds, six garlic cloves, a one inch piece of ginger cut into thin slices, six cloves, 12 peppercorns, and half of a medium sized onion sliced finely. Like I mentioned earlier, there are slight variations in the way this curry is made in different families. Instead of grinding the onions, some saute this in a tiny amount of oil and still others crush it roughly with a little salt and add the raw onion directly to the curry like we do while making sorak. I like to grind the onion because I prefer a smoother curry. To all of these spices, I'll also add one and a half tablespoons of tamarind that I had soaked in a little hot water for half an hour. This will add the required tangy taste to our curry. To start with, I'll now add a quarter cup of water to the grinder jar, but will then add more water later on as necessary for grinding everything to a fine, smooth paste. Here's the ground masala. It's nice and smooth. Make sure your masala is ground to this texture. Otherwise, instead of being creamy, your curry will be grainy. I had to add around one cup of water while grinding the masala. Here I have one cup of water. I'll first add just half of it to this vessel and then add in the masala paste. I'll now rinse this bowl using the remaining water from the cup and add it to the masala. Let's give this a stir. We'll need to dilute the masala mix with some more water. So I'll first add the rinsings of the grinder jar and then add two cups of water. Let's start heating the curry on a medium flame and then add in half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of sugar, 
and 1 teaspoon of chilli powder. If you are using a mix of Kashmiri and Bedgi chillies, you could skip the chilli powder at this stage and add some at the end if necessary. The curry should be neither too thick nor too thin. So adjust the consistency accordingly by adding some more water if you need to. Once the curry comes to a boil, add 2 dry kokum skins to it. Reduce the heat to low and let the curry simmer for around 7 to 8 minutes, stirring it occasionally. This step is important for letting the flavours of the spices get extracted into the curry. It's been 8 minutes and I think the curry needs to be thinned a little. So I'll add in just a quarter cup of water. The consistency now seems just right. It's now time to add the marinated fish to the curry. But first, we'll take the ladle out of it and set it aside as we shouldn't stir the curry after adding the fish to it. We have to add the fish in carefully, spreading the pomfrets out a little so they don't get piled up in one part of the vessel. The fish will need around 8 to 10 minutes to cook. During this time, we have to absolutely avoid stirring the curry to make sure the fish stays intact as it cooks. Now, instead of stirring the curry, we'll have to swirl it around in the pot by gripping the handles like this. If the pot doesn't have handles, use a kitchen napkin to grip it. After letting the fish cook for 10 minutes, I'll add in half a cup of coconut milk to give the curry an even richer taste. I extracted this from around half a cup of grated coconut. You could also use canned coconut milk or the reconstituted kind made from dried coconut powder. I'll also add a slit green chilli and then swirl the curry around to disperse the coconut milk. I let the curry boil for a minute and then taste it. At this point, you'll be able to adjust the taste of the curry and make it exactly the way you want it to be. The curry is delicious, but I think it could do with just a quarter teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of sugar. That's it. I let the curry boil for a minute more and then show you how the fish has cooked. Looks great, doesn't it? It has cooked perfectly without parts of the flesh breaking off. I'll now turn the stove off and let the fish steep in the curry for around 10 minutes before plating it. Our curry is not only delicious, it also has a rich, appetizing colour. Like most Goan curries, the taste will be even richer the next day. And as most Goans will tell you, Kalchi Kodi or yesterday's curry is a much relished delicacy. Our flavourful Goan fish curry can be enjoyed with bread or chapatis but will go best with a plate of fluffy, steaming hot rice. This curry really does pack a flavourful punch, which is why I hope you'll make it at home and see for yourself how tasty it is. Do subscribe to my channel for more of such tasty recipes. Until we meet again, happy cooking!